What's going on, viewers? My name is Bill Schneider, and this is Rumble Garage. Now, I provide tub kits for the Subaru community, and I get asked frequently how or even why you would tub your Subaru. Well, it's time to make an upload, and this is it. Okay, first major step is you are going to want to disassemble the front end. Take off all your body parts. Get them away so you do not damage the paint. The reason why you are going to have an ability to damage that paint is because we're going to be doing a lot of cutting and welding. There will be sparks thrown everywhere. If you have the ability to remove the front windshield, do so, but it is not necessary. You can absolutely drape a fiberglass welding blanket across the windshield and be done with it. I prefer to actually strip them down only for the sheer fact that this one is a full build, so it's a lot easier to do so. But in this aspect of actually explaining this, the first step we're going to have to do before we do anything is actually clean the engine bay itself it has oil it has grime and you are not going to be able to do any kind of grinding on this surface because it has this oil if you grind this surface without cleaning it you are going to grind the contaminants and all the oil into the steel itself and you will have contaminated welds you will never get a good weld so understand that you need to clean first i like to generally use the concentrate from subaru this is about $10 a bottle. You can get it straight from them, or you can go right over here to the straight tub of towels. You can get these just about anywhere. Um, I picked them up from Walmart. They're about $10 for this entire container. It's about saturated cloths, and these towels work really well. That's why I carry them in my shop. Use gloves. You generally don't want to have your hands you know, saturated with this. It's going to be a lot harder to clean, and these rubber gloves don't usually hold a lot of dirt like your hands will. So yeah, another tip also as well is I use microfiber. These are cheap. You can go right to uh, Harbor Freight or Walmart, etc., and buy, <clears throat> excuse me, bags of these for very, very cheap. And then when you're done and they're nasty, you just throw it away. It's that simple. It's a lot better than paper towels. Not only that, it's going to pull a lot easier. So the first thing I do is I saturate <clears throat> everything down. Also, if you notice, I have not removed any of the wiring. The reason for doing so is because I want to clean and degrease all of that as well. When I'm pulling all of this out after we clean the engine bay, I do not want to be grabbing a hole of a tire wiring harness that is covered with sludge or oil and defeat the purpose of having a clean engine bay, especially for the sheer fact that we are going to drag a wiring harness across a lot of the steel surface after. You want to make sure that's clean as well, which is the main reason why I use the tub towels. 
Okay, so after letting everything sit and saturate, you can really see all the dinge and the mud and the oil, etc. that all is going to have to be cleaned. Now, I don't expect you to have the tiniest fingers in the world and to be able to get into a lot of these places, so a lot of people are generally going to take a lot of this apart to get it out. Out as in the dirt. Everybody wants it all out. You want all of the oil residue, etc. You want everything in here as clean as you possibly can be. So I'm going to give you the best tip I possibly can. This right here is going to be your friend. If you can acquire an air compressor, then by all means, use it. Because this is going to save you a lot of time. Now, it's hard to be able to get in there and wipe all this out. But once it's been saturated with all of that degreaser and you allow it to work, you can come in here now with 120 PSI. And bear with me, this is going to be loud for a second. Huge difference. And it's dry. We're literally doing two actions at the same time. We're cleaning the surface and we're drying it. You can't beat it. But as you can see, there is some staining from all of the dirt and dinge that has been sitting there and accumulating for so long. You can go in there later on with a wipe or even some acetone to clean the entire surface so that it is ready and available to put a grinder or welder to. In this instance, we're going to go ahead and take the Rumble Garage tub kit and place it, trace it, cut it, and weld it into place once everything has been cleaned all the way down to a nice clean surface. So now I'm just going to run through the entire engine bay here with the 120 PSI blow gun and get this done. Now, after you blow everything out, now you're going to have to run through it and clean everything as best as possible. I like to use the tough towels. They work amazing. I literally can wipe away whatever I need to a nice clean surface. Okay, so now everything has been dried down and blown off after I've already gone through it with the tough towels and cleaned everything out. Everything looks really good now, just like it should, all the way down to the base coat that they applied from the factory with no oil, sludge, grime, residue, any of that. Even the subframe itself is nice and shiny and dry with no sludge and residue on it as well as the inside bill housing of the transmission has been scrubbed clean. Also went the extra mile, did the inside of the cow of the wiper arm assembly itself, and usually inside there it gets pretty nasty. So went ahead, did that, because we are painting everything, so you might as well clean it up, go the extra mile, and make sure you don't have any rust later on down the road. Okay, so moving on to the next step. Now we're going to have to move everything out of the way so that we can now place the tub kit onto the actual designated areas. Now, obviously we are trying to get rid of this tiny little hump here because it's not enough wheel clearance on the inside. My tub kit comes up to the top of the strut tower. Now, yes, I understand that you have this much of the crash bar and the wheel will live underneath here, but aesthetically, it looks so much better when you bring the tub to the top of this strut plate here up to this actual tower and then bevel it in. And that's why I made the tub kits that way. I'm not a big fan of the half tubs and whatnot. I honestly, I, I call them camel humps because that's what they look like to me. Obviously, I'm extremely biased. But I also know what looks good. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and start moving some of this stuff out of the way. And we're going to start with this actual fuel filter here. And then we're going to move over to some of these cords here. Now, a lot of them I just have draping over. And some of them will be able to just be able to move off to the side. We'll be able to actually place just the top portion of the tub here and get a general idea of what is going to be cut out, etc. My tub actually runs on the actual inside here frame line so you actually are getting all of this here as wheel clearance where the battery used to live now that battery is going to have to be relocated when you do these tub kits because you're not going to be able to fit that battery in there unless with you you know unless you go with like a an ultra slim battery i guess but in all reality a relocation to the trunk is probably just ideal
Okay, so real fast, these are the tub kits that I provide. Now, this one is already trimmed out and ready to go for this model. So it will be a place, trace, and cut weld kit, as you see. Now, you can already tell the inner extra wheel clearance that you are going to provide for yourself is amazing. You are able to extend the tub much further and aesthetically look a lot better than the OEM tub itself. Now, I'm going to go ahead and let this timber right over. And we'll go ahead and show you the... You know the interference for clearance for now everything is kind of in the way we've got this ground harness here we've got here where the actual windshield washer reservoir bottle used to bolt to these tabs are going to have to get drilled off these spot welds there are four of them they will have to be removed so that you can place this directly to the actual strut tower itself and get a nice seam as you can see all the way up and around and then carries up and down you know nice and tight up in here once we get the harness out of the way and the actual fuel filter itself and obviously we'll have to carry over to the passenger side as well to get rid of all of the boost solenoid assembly and this brake booster assembly as well we will have to unbolt this move this off to the side really you're just going to go ahead and tweak the brake lines themselves and what i mean by tweak is you're just going to unbolt here and then just push it out and just by your little bit of pressure it will have memory and it will just sit there and be ready to go and then when you're ready to bolt it back in place you can push it back and put the bung back in if you so desire unless you're going with an actual relocation which majority of people actually do when they do the tub kits themselves common upgrade for these is an ABS delete. You're gonna go with a proportioning valve and you'll be able to get rid of that, but that's another upload. For now, let's go ahead and continue to disassemble so that we can clearance for the tub kit to be placed and traced. Okay, so I generally have everything out of the way and I'm ready to go other than the actual ABS unit itself. If you've ever wondered how to actually unplug one of these, and they can be rather difficult if you don't know what you're doing, you are going to want to pull this little lever here. Now, you start prying this up and getting behind that. And that right there is what unlocks the harness. Pretty easy. Okay, so now that you got the ABS unit moved off to the side, everything is clear on the passenger. Now, moving over to the driver's side, we still have the harness that's in the way, but that's okay. We're going to cut out that void. We'll be able to slip that through. It won't be in your way. For now, we can just move it to place the tub there to actually trace it. But before we can do so, we do not have a flat mating surface until we get rid of these mounting tabs for the windshield washer reservoir. This is what you need. This is a spot weld drill bit. It has a little tiny nipple that sits on the top, and that is actually what sinks into the center. So the best thing to do if you've never done this before, you can center punch and dimple the actual spot weld itself. But generally, you can normally just send it and you'll be able to get through it. Now, in order to actually break these spot welds off, you are just drilling just this plate off. So it's all that you're looking for as far as metal thickness. That is the actual thickness of this bracket. That's all you're trying to drill off. You're not trying to go completely through. If you do go all the way through, no big deal. You have a welder. All right, so as you can see, I've gone ahead and drilled just the actual thickness of the bracket itself. And if you don't feel like you've gone far enough, then go ahead and check your work by putting an actual chisel behind the bracket or between the bracket and the panel itself, allowing it to separate a lot easier with some pressure. So you're gonna come in from the backside here and you'll actually come in to the actual crevice itself and then give it a good tap. And that's it, that one is broke. We'll go ahead and remove the chisel and you can see that it was separated. We'll just bend that up and out of the way. Pretty nice, so basically repeat.
Okay, so I placed the driver's side tub into the actual section and it is just sitting there. You can see how it does contour on the actual body lines themselves. Now, it took me a long time to be able to perfect these tub kits and get them to where they are a place and trace kit. There is maybe possibly a little bit of grinding and a little bit of manipulation needed, but I've got them very, very close, enough to where your fabricator or welder or even yourself is gonna be very grateful that you do not have to take the time to do this all on your own. It's a lot easier to be able to just order the kit itself. Now we're gonna go ahead and place the passenger side on. Now they are formed and contoured in a symmetrical fashion, but I'm going to teach you something that most people do not understand, and I've had to relate this to a lot of Tubbs customers, and then once I explain it, they get to see it on a real basis with their own car. The way this tub is sitting, it is sitting on top of that battery tray. So it gives you an idea of how much you're going to have to cut and you know that that battery tray is gonna to have to be removed first before you can plant that tub down to actually trace. Do not trace the kit in the placement that it is in now. That battery tray must be removed first. It has a bunch of spot welds. You are to drill all of those out and remove that pan so that you can then set that tub down completely on the inside of the rail portion. It all lines up perfect with the actual strut itself and gives you all of this extra wheel clearance. So if you didn't wanna go out like we did here with the tire, you can actually stay with stock offset and not have to worry about flares or wide body, etc. But back to the passenger side. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to place in the passenger side tub here. Now, as you can see, there is a little gap that is actually on the inside. Now, the reason for that is there is no battery tray on this side. So it allows the actual tub to sit farther down. By doing so, it comes into the edge here, which is beveled, which kicks the tub over. That is why it will not seat perfectly. This edge here is rounded. It is not straight. You can see it is very round, and that's why that tub will not seat in there. So, no, there is not extra grinding. No, there is, it was not done incorrectly. I, I do these often. If I don't cut a tub kit every day, I'm probably not doing my job. And with that said, we're gonna go ahead and tap this into place. Okay, so what I mean by tapping in place is you are going to bring it up to the top as far as you can. Now, you are going to tap here in this area. It will then flare this tongue section up and around and bevel this perfectly. You can't quite tell by looking at it, but when you pull this away, you can see that this area here is not the same as it is over here. This side is much straighter and is actually in farther where this sits. Your car is not completely symmetrical on both sides, so this here is not the edge. This is the edge in here. This is the edge of the tub. So that's where the tub will lay. So when you tap this in, it will form fit up and around. This is where you'll tap and you tap it into until it gets nice and tight. And now in order to get this to seat in there, you will have to take a cutoff wheel and slit this area just so it goes into the slit. All right, so you can see if I bring this up to where I want it to be, there is quite a substantial gap here because it bevels out here because they want this to be bolted to the actual splitter for the ABS or brake lines, I should say. So what you're going to do is tap that gap away and just tap it into the actual strut mount itself. Okay, so I've gone ahead and tapped it into place and manipulated the metal perfectly as a nice form fitment. And all I did was tap this section around the actual top tower. It's very simple. You're just going to tap it into place and close the gap. Please don't make it harder than it is. Okay, so once you tap that into place, then you're going to go ahead and hold it where it is supposed to live. Come down here where it's Pac-Manning out. 
paint mark or just mark where you need it to live or where it is going to be. And if you're really finicky, such as myself, I'll actually measure from the inside headlight bezel itself to the tub. So I know that they are the same distance, same distance and in the same placement. So from that mark, we're gonna move that tub out and then we're just gonna take the cutoff wheel and just slit a tiny little slit right there for the tub to sit nice and snug up against the outer panel. Okay, I got it sitting in the slit and then we can basically get a nice tight fitment now all the way up and around, nice and snug up against the actual panel and everything looks phenomenal. So now it is literally a place and trace kit with very 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 little work so for all you naysayers who all say you needed to do a little bit of grinding you did something wrong because i replicate these things i literally put my jig on it and i trace it and then i cut on the line and then i grab another tub kit and then i trace it and i cut on the line and then i grab another tub and I trace it and I cut on the line and I just keep moving my jigs over and over and they get replicated and they're the same every single time because that's FQC, that's final quality check. You make sure that they fit perfectly. And in this instance, I'd say they look pretty damn good, wouldn't you? So, and they are also just sitting there with just gravity and gravity alone. There's no tacks, there's no welds, there's no glue, there's no adhesive, there's nothing. They are literally sitting there and they look absolutely beautiful. Look at that nice tight fitment. This is why I bring this to you. This is why I have this. I love to help. I've conveyed that many, many times. I am that guy. If you are looking for someone to help you out in your steel and fabrication, I'm it. I promise you. Not many people are going to be able to beat my prices, and there is a reason why I am the only one out there that sells tub kits for Subies. Yes, there are carbon fiber WRC replica kits also as well. Um, you can put the, you know, the carbon fibers in there, which is really great, but understand that once you notch and cut all that out to rivet or bond carbon fiber in there, you lose a lot of rigidity and structure. Yes. It looks baller. It looks beautiful. I get it, but there's no structure in there anymore and there's a lot of flexing and it just is what it is. So if you're looking for an actual real steel tub, Rumble Garage is your answer. And also, I'm gonna convey this because I feel it really does need to be said on my channel. Now, I'm a big firm believer of quality over content. There's a reason why I'm not a big fan of the whole daily vlogs and wondering what kind of cereal you're eating that day. Now, understand that when I say something, I mean it. I don't hide anything. And when I say that these tubs are replicated in the same fashion and that's why they fit every single time, it's because my templates themselves are steel. Now this is the contour. This is the piece that gets strapped to the actual nine inch tub itself. They are clamped to it. They are traced and then they are cut out. This is for this body style behind me, the GD body style, which starts from 2002 and ended in 2007. So understand that each individual body or model will have its own tub placement. If you're looking for tubs, Get a hold of me. All right, viewers. Well, I hope you enjoy part one of how to install Rumble Garage tubs. Now, if you are looking for actual tub kits themselves, go ahead and reach out to me. Now, I definitely make tub kits every day, but understand that I'm a very busy person and there is a waiting list. So if you are watching this and you have not received your tub kits, I promise you, I cut these every day. They're on their way. So everybody stay tuned for part two where we actually go through and do the actual tracing and cutting itself. Now, part two is going to be much more detailed. And don't worry, I will make it a lot easier for you guys. I will give you a detailed list of every single tool that is needed and we'll definitely go through the entire process just like I've explained today. So I hope you enjoyed this upload. I'm Bill Schneider. This is Rumble Garage. I work on only cars with stars. Subaru only. Have a good day.
<laughs> so I probably better state the fact that these are not an open wheel well tub kit. They are a closed wheel tub kit. They absolutely are enclosed and are weldable. This is a 16 gauge cold rolled steel made right here in the U.S. of A. It is not junk material. And understand that I take pride in what I do. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please subscribe, like, and please share. It helps my channel grow.